Welcome to Catalyzing Faith, where we seek to be a catalyst for your faith so that you can be a catalyst in the world around you. This series is called Catalyzing Questions, and in it we address many of the common questions and objections that you are likely to encounter in your Christian faith. And today, we are addressing the question of, well, what about universe-creating pixies? One common objection that skeptics often raise against Christianity is this assertion that our appeal to God as an explanation is itself explanatorily arbitrary. They'll say something to the effect of, well, if you want to appeal to God as an explanation, then you may as well appeal to universe-creating pixies or leprechauns or some sort of supercomputer. This is generally a response to a classification of arguments known as cosmological arguments that seek to establish that God must exist in order to explain the existence of the universe. One common example of this classification is known as the Kalam cosmological argument, and it's pretty simple. It goes like this. Premise 1. Anything that begins to exist has a cause. Premise 2. The universe began to exist. Therefore, we get the conclusion the universe had a cause. But what could that cause be? This largely depends on what we mean when we say universe, and in the context of this argument, the universe is understood as all that is spatial, anything that is physical, all that is material, and everything that exists in time. And from this, it follows that whatever the cause of the universe is, is non-spatial, non-temporal, non-material. To see a little bit more about why that is, let's think about another example. Imagine that we are inside of a video game, and we want to explain why the video game exists. It wouldn't make any sort of sense for us to appeal to anything inside the video game because, well, in order for anything inside the video game to be an explanation of anything, it must first exist. And in order for anything inside the video game to exist, the game itself must exist. So. Whatever is the cause of the video game, whatever we can appeal to, it cannot have any of the properties that are exclusive to things inside the video game. So let's get back to the universe. If the universe is understood to be everything that is physical, then whatever caused the universe is non-physical. If the universe is understood to be everything that is material, then whatever caused the universe is not material. If the universe is understood to be everything that is spatial, then whatever caused the universe is non-spatial. And if the universe is understood to be everything that is within time, then whatever caused the universe is not within time. So what about pixies? What about leprechauns? What about supercomputers? How do they compare to these sort of characteristics? Well, a supercomputer we can eliminate right off the bat because a computer is an inherently physical object, and that's obvious. So it clearly cannot be the cause of the universe. So what about pixies? Well, we need to sort of talk about what a pixie could be. Now, we all know they don't exist, but the reason pixies can be used in this sort of sense as an objection is because we all have this concept in mind of what a pixie would be if it did exist. So off the top of my head, I can think of a pixie as sort of this pink or purple being. It has somewhat translucent wings, kind of flies around, sort of like a fairy. But right now, we've already run into a major problem. Pink, purple, those are colors. Colors are attributes of physical objects. Wings are also physical objects. Uh, if we have a fairy that is flying around or a pixie that is flying around, well, then it is moving through time and space. So right off the bat, we have an object that is physical, material, spatial, and temporal. So pixies are 0 for 4 of the necessary characteristics in order to be a cause of the universe. We could do the exact same thing with leprechauns, and you're pretty much going to run into the same problem. You will be 0 for 4. And we can run through this experiment with any proposed alternative to God that the atheist wants to throw out there. And one of two things will happen. I assure you, it's only one of these two things. One, they'll start to describe some sort of characteristic that itself is incompatible with being an explanation for the cause of the universe. Or two, they will start to describe a non-physical, non-spatial, immaterial, and non-temporal being. In which case, welcome to theism. 
Thank you for watching this installment of Catalyzing Questions. If you enjoyed this video, there's plenty more on this channel for you to watch. So go check that out. But before you do, leave us a comment in this video, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.